Okay, we're taking a quick blast back to the past. I decided to do a tutorial on these uh, reactor particles from version 2.49b. You can still get it off of the Blender website. And this was uh, a very cool effect. that You can try and take the results of this and load it into your current version of Blender, which I showed in the previous video. However, the particle system is definitely not the same, and it will try and emulate the particles results that you get in here but it won't be the same thing so you can try and tweak it a little bit but uh, sometimes you're better off just going back to the older versions of blender and using what version works for whatever reason you need so and i'll show you the difference between the effects you get in here so here in um you know well let's just look at it first so here are these particles blasting out making this thing explode notice that kind of effect right there and the way it's moving in here all right let's sh and uh, kind of give you an idea how it differs from the regular particle system i've uh i did a video on launching particles once and doing this similar type of thing but if you recall from that video i had to time the keyframes and when it got up to this certain frame number maybe 675 and i knew the particles were right at the surface of the object then i applied the explode modifier as a particle system and exploded it starting from that frame on. So they really weren't reacting with the particles. I was just kind of faking the timing on it. So you can do it. In this case they actually do react with the particles here and you can get it, you can see this. If I run this from here you see it really affects the sphere like that but if I take the sphere and move it over to the side a little bit then it's only going to hit part of the sphere and it's only going to take out that part of it. So it's a very powerful little tool and it was a lot of fun. It's not likely we're going to see it implemented in the uh, you know, modern versions of Blender, but we are going to get you know, very powerful bullet physics implemented within Blender Render. And so that sometimes requires a little extra programming power to really bring it to life. I'll be doing tutorials on that anyway, so it won't matter. So I'll just show you how to set this up real quick in here in case you want to go back and use these effects because they're powerful and fun. So basically I have a plane in the scene and it's a part of, well, let's just start from scratch. So to get the particle system, you have to get this button here, object F7, and then this button here. These are all separate as part of objects. All right, and then I'll add a new particle system. I'll give it a little bit of a lifetime. All this should be, look familiar. I'll change the normal. So it goes like that. And by default, the acceleration is zero in this case, whereas in the modern version of Blender acceleration for gravity in the Z direction is turned on so things start falling and here it won't. If I press Alt A the particles just shoot straight out. Okay like that. Maybe I don't need it that fast. So then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a sphere to the scene. You could use Shift A but you could also use the uh, spacebar in the older versions. So add a UV sphere. There it is in the scene. I'm going to give it a color by this button right here add new right here click to get a color get green and then you have to swipe it over there all right so there's my color let's see if it's anywhere lined up in the scene well not quite right but we'll get it there all right so now this is in the scene in order for this to react it needs a particle system as well but it needs a different type of particle system so we have different choices in this old version. You have emitter, hair, and reactor. Oh, that's what we all want. So you make this a reactor particle system. Uh, we'll change the lifetime of them as they go. And then down here you have to type you want it to react with this object, which is plain. You have to type it in. It can't pick it from a list. And then we want it to react when those particles from the plane are near our object. So you have to make sure that's set to near. All right, so now when we run it, let's see what happens just for starters. So then these things, it does something when they get close. Let's actually turn the speed down. Okay, but in order to make it work, let's make these go outward when it interacts. And then you can see it starts reacting. See, it's not an even distribution. It's definitely reacting with these. So there's a, it's a unique form of collision detection against all of them like that and if you can see if I move this down just a little bit let's run this affects it there but now let's add the uh, 
modifier to the system. Let me see, it's this one right here. And we'll add an explode modifier right there. And don't apply it, just leave it the way it is. So now the faces should explode based on the particles that are applied. And there they go. Check that out, huh? It's very cool. Yes, it is. Right, and then we'll just, you know, like I said, if you low, raise it way up like that, you'll see it only hits the bottom half of it. Well, that's hitting most of it, so let's show you, just do this. Let's just shrink this down a little bit. I can maybe give you a better idea. Well, yeah, that's not a very good example, but it will affect specific locations. This comes back to you need to uh, match the number of faces in here with the number of faces of your particles. See, that says it has, what, I think, 1,025 faces. So let's try this. Let's try and make this the same. Okay, there's that. Well, that's still not quite given. Let me scale this way up and let's see if we notice it down here. It should really just, yes, yeah, there you go. That's a better idea. See, it's only affecting it locally in that location like that. Right, so you have to ex experiment. Let's put random on. And then it can react to the speed of the particles coming in as well. Yeah, that gives us a nice effect. It'll make them blow out the other side. Look at that. It makes a hole right through it. All right. Well, so that kind of gives you an idea. It's still fun to experiment with and still fast. Like I said, your real limitation is you just have to do traditional Blender rendering, which is fine. The secret to using Blender's renderer is just to put a lot of point lights all through the scene. So, you know, duplicate that there, 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 because that's... And duplicate these point lights down in shadow areas, because that's where the, blend, the Blender renderer has difficulties in the shadows. All right. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.